Hello, welcome to a video on the sum and difference formulas. So what I've got here is uh, two angles in the unit circle. So this is a unit circle. And let me change that color. Um, it's got a match. So I got these two angles. The black angle is alpha and the smaller acute angle is beta. Alpha goes all the way into the second quadrant, so it's obtuse. Beta is here in the first quadrant, so it's acute, but it doesn't have to be that way. It can be acute, acute. It could be obtuse, obtuse. But what I'm going to show you, starting off here, is I've got um, two angles here. I've got uh, alpha and beta. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract alpha minus beta. So what I want to do now is I want to, I want to create that angle alpha minus beta in two different places. So one, I've got it right here. This is alpha. This is beta. So if I'm taking away this from alpha and like just going from here to here, that would be alpha minus beta. But I could also pull off beta and rotate it around a little bit to where we make this kind of blue thing touch the black. And we get another place that I could put alpha minus beta. So meaning I could put a line right here. All right, based off of that. And now from here to here is alpha minus beta. But like I said, in between the black and the blue would also be that same alpha minus beta. So if I pull that off, there's alpha minus beta. I could rotate that around now again like we did before and make the green side parallel with the black right around there and then pull it down. And you can see that that angle right here, the green to the blue, which is the black to the blue when I take this away, that's also alpha minus beta. So these two angles are exactly the same. Alpha minus beta and then the angle right here between the blue and the black. Those are identical. So if I call this point over here the initial position, if I call that P and I call this Q and I call this S and I call this T, then I could say that this length, ST, is equal to this length, PQ. All right, because they're cut out by the same uh, angles. P, the origin, and Q, those three points, are cut out by alpha minus beta, that angle. All right, or that distance is, that, that chord right here. So that chord, PQ, is also equal to the chord ST because it is also cut out by alpha minus beta, as we said before. So what we have here is that the distance between P and Q is equal to the distance between S and T. And then we can get those points and do the distance formula. All right, those points are sines and cosines of alpha, beta, and alpha minus beta. So what is point P? Well, remember, this is the unit circle. So point P is the point one zero. All right, what is the point T? T is formed from the angle beta. So T is the point cosine beta, sine beta. All right, Q is formed from alpha minus beta. So Q is cosine alpha minus beta, sine alpha minus beta. And then finally, S is formed from alpha. So S is cosine alpha sine alpha. All right, that's the coordinates of all these four points that we have here. So we can do the distance formula between all these four points. All right, P to Q. That's the distance between 1, 0 and cosine alpha minus beta sine alpha minus beta. So remember the distance formula says the distance is the square root, the change in your x-coordinates. So cosine 
alpha minus beta. And since that's to the left, I'll actually put that after the 1. So the change in the x-coordinates, that would be 1 minus cosine alpha minus beta squared plus the change in the y-coordinates. Well, the change in the y-coordinates, since this is 0, it's just sine alpha minus beta. So sine alpha minus beta squared. All right, that's equal to st. The st is the distance between these two. All right, now don't be fooled by the horizontalness of this line. It's it's not that sine alpha and sine beta are equal here. Um, it was just really just a, an arbitrary point that they're they could be different. They don't have to be the same. But the distance between them, um, cosine beta, cosine alpha, sine alpha, sine beta, they're all they're all different here. So I do have to include all of them. So the change in the x's is just cosine beta and cosine alpha. I could just, again, I'm squaring them, so it really doesn't matter which one goes in first. So cosine alpha minus cosine beta is the change in x's squared plus the change in the y's squared would be sine alpha and sine beta. So sine alpha minus sine beta squared. All right, so there's the distance formula. <coughs> PQ equals the ST. All right, so starting on another page to give us a little bit more room. If I uh, square both sides, I can get rid of those uh, radicals on the outside. All right, and now I'll square all of these pieces. So squaring each of these binomials by like foiling them out. All right, so there's expanding all this. You may want to put these in parentheses if it helps you see it better. But just expanding them out one and then you multiply these together and double it. So minus two cosine alpha minus beta and then square the second cosine squared alpha minus beta. So this was sine alpha uh, minus beta squared. So that's the same thing as just sine squared alpha minus beta. All right, I'll square this, square cosine alpha, multiply these together and double it. So two cosine alpha cosine beta plus cosine beta squared, and then square this thing out. So sine squared alpha, multiply them together, double it, minus two sine alpha sine beta, and then square this one. So plus sine squared beta. Now, what do we do? Well, we start noticing all of these sine squared cosine squared combos. So there's one, cosine squared alpha, sine squared alpha, cosine squared beta, sine squared beta. So all those, remember, all those are equal to 1. So we got a 1, and then this is a 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. So 2 minus 2 cosine alpha minus beta. All right, and then that's equal to, these two form a 1, so the cosine squared alpha and the sine squared alpha form a 1. Cosine squared beta and sine squared beta form a 1. So that's another 2. So 1 plus 1 is 2. And then we got a minus 2 cosine alpha cosine beta. And then another minus 2 sine alpha sine beta. All right, so what do I see here? Well, I see there's a 2 and a 2 on each side that's going to cancel. And then I can divide both sides by this negative 2 that remains everywhere. And what's going to happen is it's going to leave me with a cosine alpha minus beta on the left. And over here on the right, we're going to be left with, because we're divided by a negative, this is going to be a positive cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. The negative 2's will divide away. And so there's our first formula, the sum and difference formula. We got the difference formula for cosine. And from that, we can get the other distance, in, uh, I'm sorry, the other difference in sum formulas. All right, let's start with cosine alpha minus beta, uh, the, form, the one we just came up with. And we're going to replace beta with negative beta, meaning like the angle is going back the other way. But we're going to subtract alpha minus negative beta, which would be alpha plus beta. And all we're going to do is replace beta in this formula with negative beta. So plugging in negative beta here, we see we get cosine alpha plus beta. But now what we have to remember are the even and odd properties of sine and cosine. 
So the first thing is when you plug in negative angle, a negative angle into the cosine function, that's like you didn't even plug in that um, negative sign at all. Uh, remember, a, the cosine of a negative angle is the same thing as the cosine of the positive version of that angle. Because again, the what we're doing when we're talking about a negative angle back in the unit circle where cosine and sine are defined is instead of rotating up this way, whatever beta was, instead we rotated this way, whatever beta was. But the x coordinates, which is what cosine is defined to be, are the same. So cosine negative beta is the same as cosine positive beta. But with sine, that's not true. With sine, if you rotate uh, down initially instead of up, and so if we went up, we get a positive y coordinate. But if we went down, we get a negative y coordinate. But it'll be the exact same absolute value. So they're opposites. So the sine of negative beta, we can take the negative away, but we also must take away the plus and create a minus there. So what we end up with is our second formula, which is the cosine function. So we got the cosine of alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. So just notice with cosine, alpha beta alpha beta, when there's a minus, this is a plus. When there's a plus, this is a minus. But the rest of it remains cosine alpha cosine beta sine alpha sine beta. All right, now let's move to sine. Now remember, the sine function has this property. Sine theta equals cosine of pi over 2 minus theta, so that's the angle. This is the co-function property of sines and cosines. So if you want the same output uh, with sines and cosines, just take whatever angle you're talking about and find its complement and plug that into the co-function. Right? That works for not just sines and cosine, but tangent, cotangent, and secant, cosecant, any co-function pair. All right, well, let's start with sine alpha minus beta. So according to this, the angle instead of theta, the angle is alpha minus beta, so we'll just replace uh, theta with alpha minus beta down here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this minus sign through, and I'll have a pi over 2 minus alpha plus beta, and then I'm going to regroup and put the pi over 2 and the alpha together. And now I'm going to grab, grab the wrong one, I'm going to grab the sum formula down here for cosine. Because I got a plus sign, I was forgetting about distributing the negative through. I got a plus sign right here. And so I'm going to plug in everywhere I see um, alpha. That's the first angle now. I'm going to plug in pi over 2 minus alpha right right here. And right, same, same thing right there. All right, so this is just taking the previous step that we had here and plugging it into the sum formula for cosine. It's just this is my first angle instead of alpha. So everywhere I see alpha, I'm just replacing it with pi over 2 minus alpha. All right, but everything else is the same. Uh, it's just the sum formula. But notice now we get to go back and use this. The sine of an angle equals cosine of pi over 2 minus that angle. Well, here's cosine of pi over 2 minus an angle. And it's the same thing holds for sine. It's any, it's any cofunction pair. So this is also true. For the sine, the uh, cosine of alpha is equal to sine of pi over 2 minus alpha. So this is just the sine of alpha, and this is the cosine of alpha. Okay, so we clean it up just like we did before. This is sine alpha. This is cosine alpha. So the sine of alpha minus beta is sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. All right, and then finally to get the fourth and final of the sine, cosine, sum, and difference formulas, we're going to take this one, just like we did before, and replace beta with minus beta. And that will give me an alpha plus beta. And remember, when beta changes, cosine of negative beta doesn't change, but the sine of negative beta will change. Okay, so we replace beta with minus beta. Alpha minus minus beta is alpha plus beta. The cosine of negative beta, we're replacing, here we're replacing negative beta everywhere we see beta. So the cosine negative beta, remember that's the same thing as the cosine beta because of the even function property of the cosine. And then the sine of negative beta is the opposite. Notice our sine changed of sine of beta. So there's our 
four functions. The sum, the difference formulas for cosine, right here. And then the sum and difference formula for sine, we did on this page. There's the difference formula for sine. And then once we stuck in the negative beta, we got the sum formula for sine. All right, the thing that you should see, hopefully, is with cosine, the sines are opposite. All right, with sine, the sines are the same. But with cosine, the cosines and the sines are grouped together. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. The sines, each one's paired with the other. Sine alpha, cosine beta, cosine alpha, sine beta. All right, just the sines change. Just our sines change. But cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Sine, cosine, sine, cosine. So there's just a summary of what we just said. There's the, the four different formulas. If you want to pause it and write those down. Or, or um, find it online. Just you know, Google search sum and difference formulas for sines and cosines. And print that thing out. Because that'll it comes in handy to print these little formulas out. Um, because when you're doing these identities, you don't want to have to go back and search for them in the book every single time. So it's, it helps just to print them out and just have a big sheet of all the different formulas that you're going to use to verify these identities in this section.